Welcome to Unity with Pam, with your host, Pam willis Hovey. Hello, and welcome to Unity with Pam. We are here on location in Columbus at the Trade Center for the Urban League Gala. And I'm telling you, we have the keynote speaker with us. She is Judge Glenda Hatchett. You know her from national TV, the judge, Judge Glenda Hatchett. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. I feel honored because one of the things I saw out there on the internet, you are one of the highest ranking African American women at Delta Airlines. Actually, I was the highest um, a woman of color, of, you know, Hispanic, Asian, uh, all over the world at the time I was there, yes. What made you pursue a career in law? Well, I'll tell you, frankly, I went to law school never expecting to practice law. Um, I had an undergraduate degree in political science and history, and then I worked for a year and then went back to law school, not planning to practice, but I thought that it would, a law degree would just broaden my opportunities. But while I was there, I fell in love with litigation. So, uh, you know, it's interesting how your life can take these interesting turns. One thing I like when I watched you on Woman Thou Art Loose, mm -hmm. you talked about Delta Airlines. Yes. But also you talked about that transition yes. into going into the, being the presiding chief judge yes. on the juvenile court. Yes. And you said you had to work with God on that. Right. Um, God, God struggled with me. I will tell you, God really struggled with me because I was planning to retire from Delta Airlines. I saw that as my career. I was a senior attorney. I was... By my standards, I thought I was very successful, but God had something else for me. And when the opportunity to apply for the judgeship presented itself, my dad only said to me, you should pray about this. He didn't tell me what he thought I should do. And in that praying, you know, God really struggled with me because what he had for me was far greater than anything I could have planned for myself because it was at the bench. It was there at that work that I came to grips with my purpose and my passion, which is what I talk about a lot in this second book, my latest book, Dare to Take Charge. What made you want to go into doing juvenile justice? Right. If it had been any court other than juvenile, I would not have applied. But I think that it was a, had a lot, well, I know it had a lot to do with my parents modeling for me. My mother was an elementary school teacher when I was younger, then she was Head Start, and she was an educator all, all of her professional life, and she had a real concern for young people, as did my dad, who um, uh, was not a teacher, but he volunteered. He was the chair of our local YMCA board. He worked at the um, Bible school. He mentored children, and so I saw my, my parents really take a great interest in young people, and I think that that's where my passion came from, really. You know, I want to ask people, too, you went from doing that and then you do presiding being the judge. Yes. Then we got to know you on TV. TV, yes. How did that, that transition happened. come? People think I left the bench to go to television. That's not what happened. Okay. I left the bench to get my soul recharged. I just need to step back for a bit. And my plan was to go back into corporate America to be able to afford to send my kids to college. And it was that year that I took off, um, for that year of sabbatical that I took off, Thinking, I mean, not really so much a sabbatical, I actually left the court, um, that Sony came to me and asked me, when I do a television show, Judge Sean, and I said, absolutely not. I don't believe in what they do on television. And they said, what would it take? I said, I'd have to do it. I'd have to develop it myself. So I said, I'm very proud of what we've done, that we've done interventions. I want people to leave in better shape than they came in. That doesn't always happen because it's not scripted. But that was always the goal, and I'm very proud of the work that we were able to do. One thing when you talked about being on the bench, you talked about an eight-year-old boy. Yes. I like the fact that when I heard it, and I saw it too, mm -hmm. said you came off the bench. Right, I did. Took your role off. Yes. Still knowing you was judge, you went into mother role. I did. Talk about that. I did. I um, That was a real defining moment for me. It happened when I first went on the bench. And I'll tell you, it was that precious eight-year-old child because I didn't really know what the legal response should be, but I knew that I needed to just be with him. And that's what I did. I just came off the road, out the road, broke all protocol, and just took him into my arms. Because the truth is, I have been a mother a whole lot longer than I've been a judge. That's what you and said. that is exactly what I believed in my heart, that it's not just about position and prestige and all the things that some people think they get caught up in on the judgeship. For me, it was about passion. And was this going to be the purpose that I was going to pour myself into? And um, I thank God 
that he knew better for me than I knew for myself. Because uh, that that, I believe this is my work. I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. When you talked about that boy, what, what made you stop? What made him different? Uh, well, I was brand new. Unfortunately, I have seen thousands of kids like that since him. But it was a real, it was a real concern for me um, because I did not know at the time he was going to be the first of many, 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 you know, thousands of children like him. But it showed me that there's just so much need out here that we've got to intervene in a way that hopefully we can make a difference. Was I able to fix it? Everything? Absolutely not. Um, but, you know, there were a lot of cases. In fact, that child eventually got to go home and was reunited with his mother who had been a drug addict. Well, tell them real quickly about your two books, and then I know you got to I've got to go. got to speak. I've got to go speak. Um, the first book is, um, the first book that I did was a parenting book, and it's Say What You Mean and Mean What You Say. Um, and it's a very practical book about parenting. And because I am a parent. Um, most importantly, I'm a parent. Before I'm a judge, I'm a parent. And the second book is a book um, about life lessons. It's called Dare to Take Charge, How to Live Your Life on Purpose. And actually, the audio version of that book will come out November 1st and will be available on my website, glindahatchet.com. Uh, and so you can order it there. The books in paperback and hardback for both of them are available on Amazon or your local bookstores. So um, I think you'll really like the book. I think I will. And also, we're going to get a chance to show some footage, too, okay. in our show of Wonderful. you in action on the bench. <laughs> Wonderful. Judge Hatchett, thank, thank you. you so much thank for doing this. Thank you very much. Show. Thank you for Going doing to commercial this. break, then we're coming back with some more guests here at the Urban League Gala in Columbus, Georgia. Unity with Pam is being brought to you by these great sponsors. Come into Chester's Barbecue for our world-famous mouth-watering ribs. Smoke fresh on our grill daily. Or try one of our barbecue pork plates with fresh sides. Chester's has delicious sandwich combos to choose from that are sure to please. We also serve tempting home-cooked favorites. And don't forget to take home your own bottle of great sauce. Chester's Barbecue, serving the best food at the best price. With three locations to serve you. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new May-June edition of Local Church Connection. For business or church advertising, contact Tricia Jeans at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com. Welcome back to Unity. We're here at location at the Urban League Gala, coming from the Trade Center. And I have our Honorable Mayor Teresa Thomason with us. Want to go ahead and say yeah. welcome to Unity. Well, it's so good to be here. Well, tell yeah. us your expectations and what are you thinking about the Urban League and its coming back and 
What part are you going to play? Well, it's a big night for uh, Columbus, Georgia. We have uh, Judge Glenda Hatchett here, which is a huge honor. If you haven't ever heard her speak, be prepared to be impressed. She's fabulous. And the Urban League has evolved and morphed itself into uh, the remade, ready, and new uh, Urban League. It's very exciting. They have a, a centuries of experience, one century of experience. Uh, dating back to the turn of the last century where the Urban League was helping African-American families with workforce development and housing and income parity and other very important issues. And so we're looking forward to continuing that tradition in Columbus. What made you want to get involved in it? Yeah, well, just a lot of good people. And particularly when they said, hey, you know, we want to evolve and renew mm -hmm. ourselves for a new day. And, it, you know, things are changing. Uh, new generations are coming up all the time, ready to take the mantle of leadership. And so I think organizations do have to sort of refresh themselves from time to time and look if their uh, good, true mission is still as relevant as they want it to be. And if not, then they need to rethink uh, their objective and, and their day-to-day -day programs and how they can be more relevant in people's lives. And I think that's what they've done here. It's a very exciting time for the Urban League in Columbus, Georgia. Well, you know, Big Girl got to, got <laughs> to talk about it. Yeah. And you didn't do it about four years. Yeah. As being uh, the first female mayor, she That's right. cracked that glass ceiling. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> All right. What has it been like? It's actually been a whole lot of fun, Pam. I mean, there's so much going on in the city. It's unbelievable. And, you know, sometimes we, we know our friends, the people we go to church with, the people we work with, our neighbors. But when you're mayor, you get the privilege of getting to experience everybody's life. And it's so much fun. There's so many great churches, so many wonderful organizations like the Urban League doing great things for the city. And, uh, you know, too often we come home from a hard day's, of day's work, plant ourselves in front of the couch, don't get back out That's to see true. what's going on. And I think uh, being mayor has been a lot of fun in that it's allowed me to get to experience so many different things. And what an exciting time to be mayor of this great city. We just keep growing and changing, and uh, with Whitewater coming on board, Ooh, there's more jobs. Awesome. Yeah, more jobs. The hotels are seeing more and more activity. The convention center is seeing more and more activity. That translates to jobs and people who can pay a car note, pay a house note, Amen. send their kids to college, and that's, that's what's important. What's the upcoming new from our mayor? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, we're still working on some revitalization efforts. You know, we've had a lot going on in Uptown. That's great. But you know, Pam, we've got places in this city where, that need some help, mm -hmm. uh, places of blight and distress. But there's a lot of resources there. Uh, some of those neighborhoods have been around for a long time, and uh, they're filled with character, character that's uniquely Columbus, Georgia, filled with great families and great neighborhoods. And we need to find a way to bring them back, bring resources uh, in closer proximity to them, maximize those neighborhoods, celebrate them, and show everyone what's unique about Columbus, Georgia. Well, you know you got a campaign that's going to be kicking off pretty that's soon. That's right, after the first of the year. Y'all know Big Girl can't hold water. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, okay, you get elected the next four years. What's yeah. coming up? Yeah, well, again, I think we're going to double down on the um, revitalization, uh, curing blighted areas. We've laid a lot of groundwork. We've had a lot of education about how that can be great for schools and, and decreasing crime and increasing job rates. But, Pam, we got to do it. It takes a long time. I mean, you know, building communities, um, having purpose-built communities that also lift up schools, that's hard stuff. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And so that's what the second term will be devoted to, is really getting on that foundation that we've already laid and now making it happen for families and neighborhoods. You know, there's a lot of young children that look up to you. Oh, I yeah. watch you on Facebook, and they, they look forward to seeing you. What's that been like? I tell you, it is incredible. You know, I had a little girl tell me, uh, she was about four or five, and her mother said, um, tell Miss Tomlinson what you want to be when you grow up. Oh. And she said, I want to be the Mayo. <laughs> and uh, I said, do you? And she said, um, all Mayos are girls. Oh. Yeah, no, and it's just so cute for her to think that and uh, to not even be able to really say the whole name, but just that she was excited about it. And um, a sweet little girl I'd never met before, never met her mother before. But, uh, but like you said, uh, the kids get inspired when they see you loving your job, whatever it is you do, like mm -hmm. what you do. When you love your job, 
they get inspired, they get enthusiastic, and they start having hopes and dreams for themselves. And what a great thing that is. I'm so glad that you're here, you're with yeah. us. I know you had a, hope it's okay to say this because I'm going to put this one out. Yeah. You had a threat against your life. Yeah, yeah. Well, a young man, it was not, uh, he was struggling with some mental health issues. And uh, I think he had uh, seen me on TV and, and some other things and just had, a, a, you know, one of those miscommunications that sometimes those that struggle with mental illness have. And he thought somehow I was involved with his struggles. And, um, it, but they were fortunate they were able to find him. He also made a couple of bomb threats against Carver and Hardaway High School. So hopefully he's getting the treatment he needs now. And you're free. Yeah. No more babysitter. That's right. No more babysitter. That only lasted for a couple of days. So it worked just, out good. Well, tell people how they can contact you if they just, because I remember oh, it's, it's so very easy. approachable. Very yeah, easy. so easy. You just pick up the phone and dial 311 and ask for the mayor's office. Uh, or you can uh, contact me at ttomlinson at columbusga.org or just go to our website and it has the email address. Or you can get me on Facebook. I know, because she will Facebook you back. I, I will answer your emails. I will answer your messages. I will answer your Facebook messages, too. So give me a buzz. Well, Mayor Thompson, hey. thank you so thank much you. for doing Big Girl Show. Appreciate it. Going to commercial break and then coming back with more guests from the Urban League Gala. Unity with Pam is being brought to you by these great sponsors. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new May-June edition of Local Church Connection. For business or church advertising, contact Trisha Jeans at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com. For more than 60 years, the Dairy Queen recipe for success has been simple. It's been a combination of hardworking people, great tasting food, and tempting treats served in our establishments every day. Although a lot has changed in 60 years, some things remain the same. The smiles on children's faces, a treat for a good report card, close friends enjoying a great meal, and families spending quality time together. Here at DQ, we are always committed to treat you right. Welcome you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. Hello and welcome back to Unity. Again, we are here on location at the Trade Center for the Urban League Gala. And we have the chair of the event, Mr. Mathis Banks. Want to go ahead and say welcome to Unity. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to Unity. Well, tell people about what it's been like putting the event together and what was the need for it. Uh, basically, it's been a lot of hard work and the need is the community. We, the services that we provide in Urban League directly affect the community. So that's why we felt like you can't do anything without money. So it takes money to run programs. Some of our programs, we have an after-school program that we do down in the Urban League. This past summer, we ran a STEM program, and we collaborate with a lot of the organizations here in town, a lot of business, in order to get these things done. So the, the need is there. We, what we do at the Urban League directly impacts the community. You know, by putting this together, you're impacting the community. What response are you looking to get? Well, <laughs> honestly, we're looking to get a financial response. Again, <laughs> okay. uh, none of the programs that we, we do are free. It takes people, it takes time, it takes money. The uh, computers that we have for the Urban League program, the after-school program, they're, they're outdated, uh, largely outdated. Uh, we've had some donations for uh, printers and things of that nature. But uh, again, none of this is for us. It's for the, the, the community. The summer block parties that we used to do, you know, it takes money in order to put those programs on. So uh, we need financial support. What's it been like working with um, Susan Cooper, who's the chair of the Urban League? It's been great. We we're, uh, we collaborated. This with, you know she's an ad hoc on any committee that we do. So uh, she's a hard worker, one of the hardest workers that I've I've seen, and uh, she's dedicated to the mission of the Urban League and what we do. You know, tell people too a little bit. You do events coordinating as well on the side. Tell people about that in case they may want to use you. 
Well, actually, I don't. I'm, I'm a volunteer. I'm the, uh, the Urban League Guild president, and so I'm on the board, the transitional board, and I was appointed the chair of this committee and, and just putting something on. We In the past, we did like the Ebony Fashion Fair, and uh, we did a couple of grown folks Friday, all fundraisers for the uh, Urban League. So Okay. It's like part-time uh, professionals. A volunteer professional. I you never <laughs> know. Somebody may want to ask you. I may be coming to you for help. All right. You're the go-to person. <laughs> Well, I want to say thank you so much. Well, thank you for having for what us. you're doing. Thank you for what the Urban League is doing. Going to commercial break, then we're coming back with one more guest. Are you looking for medical personnel? Global Diagnostic Services Incorporated specializes in the placement of medical professionals. We place qualified temporary temp to perm or permanent candidates who are eager to become a part of your team. We are conveniently located in Conyers, Georgia. For more information, log on to www.globaldiagnostic.net. Medical professionals, do you have the desire to relocate? We also staff in other states. So give us a call. Global Diagnostic Services, managing the business of medicine. Is it possible to have a love-love relationship with your cable company? What if they were a different kind of cable company, starting with not asking you to sign a contract? What if they actually listened to what you need, instead of trying to sell you something you don't? And let's say they backed up their service with a money-back guarantee. Just to be crazy, let's say this cable company was made up of happy people who treated you like an actual human being. We're WOW, and we'd like to change the way you feel about cable companies. Hello, welcome back to a special edition of Unity. We are here on location at the Columbus Trade Center, and we're talking to another guest with the Urban League Gala, and we have Pastor Lowell Klein. Welcome to Unity. Thank you, Ms. Pam. Good to be here at Unity, and I thank um, you for having me today. Well, tell my people, you also have the Tree of Life, which is a free health care clinic for people. That's going to be opened up soon. Tell me about it. Yes, True Life is a primary health care clinic. Uh, we have service in both cities and here in Columbus and also, uh, well, West Georgia and East Alabama. And uh, we'll be working directly with, uh, have an affiliation agreement, I, I should say, with the Mercer University with their PA students um, and uh, having clinical hours in, this, in the uh, clinic. And also, uh, Troy University with that nurse practitioner students. Uh, uh, they need 705 hours for their clinicals, and we're working directly with uh, Columbus Technical College. They will have a lab uh, on premise, and uh, students will get training over there, along with uh, Columbus State University. I'm happy about that. They're just kicking off uh, the pre-med uh, program there. Uh, exciting, exciting time on the campus there for Columbus State University. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to uh, not only uh, being a vehicle where students can get trained at Tree of Life, but also... Uh, where we can also uh, meet the needs uh, of the citizens uh, and improve the quality of life for individual families in our, in, our area, in our area. What made you decide you wanted to do your own clinic? Well, about 12 years ago, uh, my wife came home and then uh, shared the story with me about this young child uh, that had, was diagnosed with a sinus infection. And um, because that child was uh, a guardian, uh, his, his grandmother was his guardian, I should say, and uh, on a fixed income, and she was going to wait to, you know, it was in the middle of the month, wait to another couple of weeks, get her, uh, get her check, and then get the prescription for the child. Well, in the meantime, that child died from a sinus infection. And from that point on, that just stayed with me for, for weeks and days at a time, and, and just wanted to, uh, uh, someone needed to do something. And praying about it, and uh, asking uh, God, uh, and just also complaining about it. And the word came to me, uh, just said, well, why don't you do something about it? And so we did uh, before Columbus Square Mall closed, if you remember that. So we had a little small place out there, and uh, of course the mall ended up closing. And uh, did some work with another clinic here in town. And uh, from there, I believe, uh, in order to really be effective, the model should be having a full-time staff augment with volunteers. So hence came, uh, we uh, decided to uh, launch Trail Life Healthcare. And I'm also so grateful for you uh, and uh, the audience of Unity with Pam that She's not only a, a, a TV host, but she's a, 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 a vital part of our board, and she's our PR person. So I thank God for her energy and what she brings to Tree of Life as well. Thank you for uh, giving yourself and your time to uh, Tree of Life. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of what you do. But you also, in addition to doing that, you're a pastor, too, of Seeds of Faith. Yes. So how are you able to balance both? It's called time management <laughs> and having a wife in this. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, when it's time to slow down, and 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 because what she does also is doing certain times of the year, she'll plan you know a little little uh, vacation for us, and we'll get away and uh, just you know to rejuvenate and 
And then also for us uh, as a couple, you know, uh, because our kids are grown, they're up out of the house, and for us also to have quality time uh, together. Because she's a nurse herself, she works, uh, uh, she that works, she's a neo at, uh, at uh, Brooklyn's Regional. And uh, so with her schedule and my schedule and the church and what we do, uh, it's just good to get away sometime. So you have your church plus the clinic. Now yes. what if somebody is hearing this and say, are you sure you're going to be able to do all this and be effective to getting to the patient's care? It's a matter of having quality people around you, like okay. yourself. You, know, uh, you can't do it all yourself, but it, it's good to have people that know what they're doing and people that uh, take ownership in the vision. Uh, same thing with the church itself. You know, you have quality leaders there, and uh, so you, 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 you delegate. You give people ownership, and you let them uh, do the things that they're called to do that they can express, you know, uh, uh, will let them exercise their anointings and their giftings to help you move the vision forward. One thing I want to say, you know, a lot of people are saying with the, the Affordable Health Care Act, as people call it, the Obamacare, but it's really the Affordable Health Care Act. Mm -hmm. You know, why have a free health care clinic if you're going to have free health care? Well, it's not really free health care. It is what it says it is, the Affordable Health Care Act. And so there are going to be exchanges uh, where you can go out in the market and the uh, insurance company compete with uh, and against each other. And therefore, the, the idea is to drive the price down. Uh, of course, for those that aren't employed, they'll be eligible for Medicaid. And also, for your listening viewers and, uh, of course, the seniors out there, Medicare will not be bothered. Uh, there is no change in Medicare at all. <clears throat> but it is an opportunity for those that uh, uh, um, business owners, others that don't know how they or how the ability or, or can't, uh, I should say, in time past can afford it health insurance, now this makes it accessible for them. But there'll always be a need for free quality health care in our nation, unless we go to socialized medicine. And I think we don't want that at all. Uh, because of our marketplace and the, and the free market system, we want to be able to get that, that right mix where uh, we can have those that can't uh, provide for themselves taken care of and those that can at, a, at an affordable rate uh, get insurance for themselves as well. Before we close this show, appeal to the audience and tell them your needs. Our needs, of course, is being a, a nonprofit center, uh, is to, if anything, we need funding. Uh, we ask you to go to our website at www.treealifehealthcare.org and go to under Donate, and we have a $20 a month campaign. Uh, you can give a one-time gift, of course, or you can uh, give $5 or $10. Uh, however, you're led to, uh, to help us, but uh, your gift would certainly go to uh, provide quality health care and provide uh, you know, the needs, uh, to meet those needs, the individuals that can't afford it. Um, so we ask you and appeal to you uh, to help us in this endeavor. And how may they contact you? Uh, that number is 706-573-0509. And uh, again, uh, you can always um, go to our, our, our web and uh, you can find our email address there as well. Well, Pastor Cloud, I want to say thank you so much for doing thank my you. show. Remember, show love in the community, and if you want to, sponsor Unity with Pam. Absolutely. Unitywithpam.org, or just call me. It's always on the screen, and you'll see it. Thank you so much, and show love in the community. Unity, 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 unity. Thank you for watching Unity with Pam. If you would like to be a sponsor, please contact us or visit unitywithpam.org. Production for Unity with Pam is provided by Atmotion Media Incorporated.